What makes a documentary great? I'm going to show you how great I am. Should it ask tough questions? Little by little, we went insane. Does it need to provide answers? We could turn on and turn off cancer growth. They're questions that Young Chang wrestles with every day. He's one of Canada's most thoughtful filmmakers. You may have seen, or at the very least heard, of his first feature called Up the Yangtze. Two Chinese teenagers are among the two million people whose lives are uprooted by the world's largest hydroelectric project, the Three Gorges Dam. <laughs> The human upheaval is almost too massive to comprehend, but Young took a huge story about China's rampant economic growth and made it feel small and personal. Maybe it helped that the subject matter was close to his heart. He is the son of Chinese immigrants to Canada, born and raised in Ontario. Growing up, the stories he heard from his grandfather about the old China motivated him to tell stories about the new China. And his new doc does just that. It's called China Heavyweight. It follows two young boxing hopefuls and their coach as they rise through the ranks of a sport that was once banned in China for being too Western. The film brought him into the path of one of the world's most controversial boxers, Iron Mike Tyson. We'll find out what that experience was like. And the film also sort of a metaphor for China's place in the modern world. In a country that emphasizes collective glory over the individual, should a boxer fight for their country or themselves? Please welcome back to the show, Young Chen. All right. Hi there. Good to see you again. Thanks for having me. Of course, how are you? Great. Man, so last time Wonderful. you were on the show was years and years ago. Felt like a long time ago. Was it 2007 or 8 or something like that? Yeah, about four or five years ago. Up the Yangtze, right? You had Up this the really, Yangtze. Which is yeah. something. And then now you're back and it's a boxing movie, which is well, sort of. Uh, yeah, now <laughs> it's a boxing movie. And I, I, I love uh, boxing movies. I love kung fu movies. Kind of came off of that that I found this subject. Uh, the film follows two boys from this boxing school. Uh, about 18 years old each, and they're on that cusp of adulthood, the moment where they, they enter reality, real life. How is boxing perceived in China? Boxing is a pretty, pretty um, new sport. Uh, it's, it's, it's considered what it was considered in 1959 when it was banned, and that is it was banned because it was too Western, too violent, uh, too capitalist at yeah. the time. And they lifted the ban in 1987, uh, simply because there was opportunities for Olympic categories to get many medals, uh, and this was a wonderful opportunity for the government to hone in on. And so they uh, lifted the ban, and uh, boxing since then is still in that category. It's, it's, it's still considered quite American in a way. And that was what interested me about the, the subject, the genre of boxing, you know, being put into the context of a Chinese story. When boxing was a dominant sport, for the last generation, anyway, it was because of Mike Tyson. That's and right. I heard Iron Mike almost made a cameo in this. Is that <laughs> is that true? <laughs> you know, I tried to get Mike Tyson in the movie. But I not just tried. You were close to him. I tried more than that. I yeah. I went. So I heard. I got wind that he was in China as an ambassador to boxing. He got paid a whack load of money to spend three days promoting boxing in the city of Tianjin. Yeah. I packed up my bags with my crew and a small puppy that I had found. We camped out in the, ho in the hotel lobby, this five-star luxury hotel, for three days. Elevator doors open, out comes Mike Tyson and his entourage. And they're walking past us through the lobby, and we're expectantly kind of waiting, is he gonna come to us? And he hears my dog, Laji, barking. And Laji's yelping away. He immediately stops walks towards us, and I've got my little puppy in my hand, and he starts batting him, you know, with his hand, and he's talking about this his beautiful... His enormous hand. His enormous hand. Yeah. He's batting this puppy around. I'm like, wow, it was Mike Tyson. And, and Tyson was saying, like, you know, what a beautiful dog. I don't know if I should do an impression of him or not. I think you should. I don't see why you wouldn't. Now, maybe I'll attempt it, but if the audience boos, then I will stop. They won't boo. Look, he, you're an artist. You're not going <laughs> to boo an artist. I say go for it. So Mike Tyson took my puppy, and he was like, "There's such a cute puppy! Oh my God, this puppy is so beautiful!" And and you know, and he said, and he said, and and I took this as my opportunity. Yeah. You know, Mike, I'm making a documentary about boxing. Will you come and sit down with us and take a look at some footage? And he was so supportive of the footage he was seeing in the film. He felt that uh, you know he grew up in in hardship as well, 
and he could see the mirror of what these boys were going through, these mm -hmm. tobacco farming boys uh, picked out of obscurity to become boxing champions, and uh, he could connect to it. Now, he never got involved with the film. So he just got him walked away? Did he take your dog? He didn't take the dog, okay. luckily. You know, as, a, as an artist or as a filmmaker, do you think it's important, or is it in any way part of your, uh, your obligation to tell the story for the people who don't have the voice, to be the voice for the voiceless? And most definitely an important, for me, what drives my filmmaking is the need to tell uh, stories, uh, human stories, uh, growing up uh, in a small town, growing up as a, perhaps a bit of an outcast. Uh, I think that I have a certain sensitivity to uh, people that are uh, uh, going through trouble. Did you feel like an outsider when you were growing up in Whitby? Growing up in Whitby, I gotta put in that it's a, I, I, I think at the time it was not an easy place as a Chinese boy. Okay. To grow up in, and uh, I, you know, we had my brother and I had some tough times growing up there. A certain dislocation. I feel that as a Chinese Canadian, uh, there is a sense that I'm sort of uprooted in a way. When you say, I, when you say tough dad, times, were you, know, you bullied? Were you like, did you get into fights? Or, or did you experience racism? Occasionally, there were those instances yeah. where you, uh, you know, it uh, it can it can be. It can be tough when you're not very easily recognized and you don't really fit in in a certain way. I'll play a clip here that, that ties to your childhood from the news from back when you were young. In all, between 12 and 15,000 people protested what they called Black Sunday by marching through the streets of Toronto to the Chinese consulate. This clique who used machine guns and armored right? tanks to brutally slaughter the unarmed Chinese people sh shamelessly called themselves the Chinese government. It's a protest with Tiananmen Square. You, you were there when you were a kid, weren't you? I was uh, at a protest in t Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Is that where that yeah, was yeah, from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, shivering. Yeah. yeah what was that? Yeah. I mean, you were young when you went there. But what do you remember from that, from the protest? Well, you know, at the time, very good clip, by the way. That's uh, it. Kind of hits you right there a little bit. Uh, at the time, I was very young. I was about 13 years old, 1989. Went with my parents to downtown Toronto to the embassy. And I won't forget the experience. It was uh, very emotional as a wide-eyed kid uh, to look up and see these student protesters at the time. These uh, represented very much to me they were heroes, in a sense. But you might have been too young to understand what it was all about, right? Oh, certainly it was. It seemed like something wrong was happening. To see the tank man image, to see uh, these students covered in blood, their hands and carrying bodies, that was uh, shocking for me. And I'll never forget being at that embassy and looking up at the window of, uh, in the embassy and seeing uh, some of the delegates or, or officials taking photographs of people in the audience with long zoom lenses. It was, and I reacted to that and I actually looked up at one of them and I stuck my tongue out and I gave him a little one of these. But it was, uh, it, it stuck, struck me deeply. Between Yangtze, you know, and it's, yeah, difficult, yeah. but talking about the environment and this one here, could you make a film that's critical of the Chinese government? Would you? I'm not averse to being critical of any government. Our government, perhaps, for example, in Canada, if I may interject for a second, that I think that you know, we're undergoing a lot of hardship as filmmakers as well. Uh, that being with cutbacks and such like. Uh, Which well, you got your first theater, your film made with. Well, that's right. I mean, I, I got my start at the National Film Board of Canada. And uh, I owe everything to that opportunity that I had at the National Film Board. And, um, and having heard that they've cut back on their emerging filmmaker program uh, because of you know, the idea that there's not enough money to go around to support the arts is shocking to me. And I fear for the future of, of uh, up and coming filmmakers and the opportunities that they're losing uh, in this great country that we, you know, it's, it's a shame. That being said, you know, likewise in China, there's so many problems in China. I would say that in some ways, um, China heavyweight is not uncritical. When we look at what's happening in China now, problems with corruption on the governmental level, uh, even a local government level, rife everywhere. Yeah. You look at corruption and greed, what's driving that country is often uh, the need to make money, to be successful but at what cost? And I feel that Coach Chi, this modern hero, uh, 
is a man so humble that he, he has this idea of instilling a certain moral character to the younger generation. I think China needs to see more of these characters, uh, these ordinary citizens who carry themselves with, uh, with dignity. China Heavyweight is the name of the film. Uh, actually premiered at Hot Docs in Toronto, and it opens in Toronto, Vancouver, and in Montreal on May the 11th. Go check it out. It's nice to see you again, yeah, man. Real pleasure. Thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.